Hey, what's up guys? I'm Mike and this is Porty's Chop Shop. As you can tell from the intro and the title, this video is on rebuilding a wiring harness. Some harnesses are super simple like this transmission sub harness and others are more complex such as this taillight harness that you've seen on my channel before or this ECU repin harness that I did that you haven't seen yet. As for reasons why you might want to do this, sometimes the old connectors just wear out, or in my case, they just aren't the correct ones that I like. And all of the nasty old vinyl tape has completely disintegrated and turned into glue. Whatever your reason, the process is pretty much the same for anyone, so let's go. First, let's go over some of the tools that I'll be using. I like these automatic wire strippers. I have a couple of different types of wire crimpers some de-pinning tools that I use to push the pins on the Deutsch connectors, a couple of clippers and consumables like tape and split loom. All right, let's get into the process. First step is disconnecting and in my case, removing the old switches and sensors. I chose to remove them because they were pretty beat up and the pigtails ended up being too short to put new connectors on. I'm also glad I did because I found three different leaks on all of the sensors as well as a stripped out bolt on the speed sensor and a stripped out bolt on the wiring holder that I'll show later. This would also be a good time to label your wires if you need to but these are simple switches and they don't need to be labeled for this case. The next step is to strip off all of the old tape and anything else such as wire loom or anything like that. This is a very messy job as you can see. I like this wax and grease remover to clean the wires off. It also does a really good job of cleaning your hands, but I couldn't in good faith show that because it's terrible for your skin. So just wet a paper towel with this stuff and wipe it down and all of that residue comes right off. If you've ever worked with old disintegrated vinyl tape adhesive, you know how amazing this type of cleanup is. Next we move on to clipping off the old connectors if you're reusing your wiring. In this case I am. and stripping down the wires to get ready for the new connectors. Here you can see the kind of condition that those switches were in underneath the covers and how short those pigtails were. So this is why I got new ones. So go ahead and crimp your new pins on. Like I said, these are for the Deutsch connectors. I'm using these universal style Deutsch connectors because they're cheap and easy to use, but you could also use something like these wiring specialties replacement parts. These Deutsch connectors have male and female pins and male and female plugs. Just make sure that the male pins go in the female plug and the female pins go in the male plug. Just follow the directions. It should look something like this just before putting in that locking pin. Now just rinse and repeat for the other sensors or anything else on your wiring harness. Lastly, I had to extend the wires on the speed sensor, and I did that with a crimp, not solder, because I'm not a heathen. I also repaired this old flexible wiring harness holder, and I'm glad I did, because it was held in by a screw, and I had to fix the threads with a Healy coil. 
I accomplished this just by tapping it flat on my vise and putting some new heat shrink over it where the old rubber was and bolted it back into place. This was one of two threads that I ended up having to repair on this job. I chose to use a helicoil to do this, which I'll go through step by step now. After that repair was done, I reinstalled all of the switches, hoses, and wiring harness holders onto the transmission, and then started to lay out the wiring harness. This is an important step because it will set the lengths for all of the wires on your harness, as well as get the routing for where the harness will go, which also affects the lengths. Just take your time and route the wiring harness in a way that makes sense and keeps tension off of the plugs and the sensors and keeps the wiring harness out of any danger. Once the links are set, I like to put a piece of tape at any intersection or branch off point. This keeps the plugs at the correct orientation and length before moving it to the bench. With the harness lengths and intersections set, we can move the harness to the bench and start wrapping it in split loom. The only real tip I have for you here is to make sure that the split on the split loom is facing the same direction all the way through the length of the harness. This will help with taping it later and ensure a nice clean look. After the split loom is on the entire harness and it's sitting how you like it with the right lengths, we can start taping it off. Like I said, I'm using this Tessa tape, which is a cloth tape that sticks really well to itself and is pretty easy to work with. My last tip is just to ensure that the tape overlaps the top side of the split. This makes sure that it's tight and makes a cleaner look. One other thing I like to do is put a piece of heat shrink at the end and that just keeps everything in place. The only thing left to do now is to reinstall the wiring harness and sit back and enjoy your hard work. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did like this video or learned something new, consider subscribing or leaving me a comment. It helps me to know how I'm doing with these videos and helps my channel to grow. I'll be back on the 620 soon and I hope to see you guys there. Take care. And again, thanks for watching and subscribing.